It's fair to say Snodhill Castle has always been a benign, if mysterious, presence for all of us who live in Snodhill, all 12 households. But over the past 10 years, it's been turning from, if you like, a picturesque or rather romantic ruin into what uh, threatened to become a wreck. And we've been very fortunate that a number of committed individuals have come together with Historic England and the community here to form the trust and honor the castle by, first of all, clearing the site to reveal its, if you like, its true colors. For many of us, this work has been a revelation. It's a castle of puzzles, its size, its layout, its standing remains, and its history. I'm Gary Crook. I'm chairman of the Snodhill Castle Preservation Trust. I first came here 30 years ago um, as one more castle to look at. It became immediately apparent that this place was very unusual and had a lot of very interesting features that nobody knew about. And that was really the start of a 30-year campaign to get to where we are today, where the castle's being rescued. I had no idea the North Tower actually existed until a few weeks ago when we cleared the base of it. So it's both exciting and involving to really ensure the castle rises out of its leafy obscurity, like Lazarus, to show that it's really a site of national significance. Snodhill Castle in far west Herefordshire, near the border of Wales, is one of 20 medieval marcher castles on the Heritage at Risk Register in Shropshire and Herefordshire. This site's been in poor condition since it was slighted, really, after the Civil War. Long-term exposure to wind, rain and snow are real threats that eat into the masonry and over a long term can cause instability and collapse. And several sections of this castle have collapsed in the last 20 to 30 years. Uncontrolled growth of vegetation is another reason why castles like this fall into disrepair. The stems of ivy as thick as your arm are growing through the walls here, pushing the masonry apart. There are badgers undermining the mot and undermining the keep that sits on top of it. There are trees which have fallen over and crushed masonry beneath it. When I first came here in about 2006, it was like Sleeping Beauty's castle. You couldn't even get through the gate for the brambles. But today, all that's been cleared by the volunteers. Now we're able to come in and undertake our research. We know very little about this castle because the documentary evidence is extremely slight. So we don't know when the castle was built. We don't know who built it. We don't really know how it worked because we don't know, for instance, where the original entrance was. So that's why we're here, to undertake detailed survey work using landscape survey, detailed survey of the masonry remains of the castle, aerial photography and ground photography, and to look at its wider landscape setting so that we can understand how the castle worked in relation to the local parish church, for instance, and the deer park, which rises on the hill behind the castle and which is an important element. As a result of the work that we're doing, the Trust will be able to present a new understanding of the castle to the public and also to frame their own research programme going into the future. The Mott, the terraces that are behind me, the inner bailey up to the right, the more we clear, the more it reveals some of the secrets that in future years, we hope archeologists and the local school and community will delight in investigating and exploring the secrets of this remarkable place. <laughs>